Good afternoon, Michael Callahan here on Wednesday the 25th of September and I'm here with Steve who's a trade union rep for the fire brigade and I'd just like to ask him a few questions starting with um, what is your initial purpose here today? We're trying to um, raise awareness of what, what's happened to us uh, with regards to this strike. Uh, for the fire brigade, uh, we are now being made, so for the government, we are now being made to work uh, until we are 60, as opposed to 55, which has always been. Uh, also with that, the a very physically demanding very, job. Very extremely physical, demanding job. Um, I'm still young, I'm in my mid-30s, I find the job challenging now. And to be asked to be doing it in 25 years' time, I think is utterly ridiculous. Uh, on top of that, the, uh, the device, looking at devices sort of think that sanctions of capability issues, if we can't do our job at 57, 58, 59 years old, and in theory that could mean we could be leaving our jobs with, uh, with our pe a severely depleted pension, and that we wouldn't be able to get it until our state pension age, which by the time I'm that age, we don't know how, how old that could be. So it's chase it or die trying. Exactly, that's right. Uh, and, you know, apart from that, we are also being made to increase our pension contributions. We already pay the highest contributions um, along with the police in the private uh, public sector. And now we've been asked to pay even more. And it's just come to a stage where we have to draw a line, really, and say enough's enough. Absolutely. Has there been any uh, any further cuts on the other end of uh, your sector at the moment? Oh, yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot of cuts going on for the, uh, the fire brigade nationally. Uh, obviously, our budget has been slashed from the government through the actions of the banks, etc. Being that we are now dealing in a, you know, with a depleted economy, so our budget has been slashed. And the next couple of years, we're going to see some real changes, particularly here in um, East Sussex. We're going to see fire stations closing. Uh, there will be less and less frontline firefighters, and um, it will be, despite what uh, management say, it will be public uh, further risk and again this is something that we have to try and stop happening. So uh, how does this affect the worker as an individual and, and how also does that affect uh, across the board when you work together as a team and you're working at home? Well it means we have to work harder uh, and often in a, putting ourselves in a situation we wouldn't always be in. For example when we ride the fire engines we have a standard so if you put two fire engines the standard is five firefighters on one fire engine and four on the other. However, and it's been recognised that that crew, that sort of nine in total crew, is what we need to effectively plow a house fire or respond to a road traffic collision. Everyone has their role. That's right, yes. But more, more often now, we're being made to run uh, a minimum crew in, so we've only got four on each lorry. It doesn't sound like quite that much, but having one less firefighter on a fire engine makes life extremely difficult. Yes. yes. So we are seeing that already, that our jobs are being made harder by the lack of, uh, of crew members. So what options in the future if it continues to persist can you see happening? Well, you, may, you get situations where people cannot go to a fire and put the full, um, so what we call PGA, the predetermined attendance, they won't be able to have it there within um, a safe time. As people have always known, with regards to fire, time is the most essential exactly. yeah. It's the response time and it's the weight of response. You combine the two, so you've got to respond quickly and you've got to respond with enough fire engines and enough firefighters to do the job. And if we're getting into a situation where we're not responding in time, um, people will die. It's as simple as that. We've always said smoke kills in seconds, you know, fire kills in minutes. And if we've got less fire engines and the firefighters have got the fire engines have got to come from further afield, then it means it's going to take us longer to get there, longer to put the fire out, and to rescue anyone who's in there. So that that is a real concern. We could be in danger of the lives of the public. So uh, what initial impact, in a positive way, are you hoping that will occur from bringing more attention to this issue? Well, I think it's bringing pressure on to the, uh, the Fire Minister, Brandon Lewis. I mean, he said some blatant, blatant untruths um, along, the, along the way with this... Um, campaign of ours. He's not really been willing to negotiate with us, despite uh, FBU's repeated attempts to. Yeah, he said things like, we're going to be getting £26,000 a year. What he's, what he's forgotten to say is he's taken this cut, the state pension is included in there, which is about £7,000. So There's quite a lot there, and a lot of my... Considering it is, what you do. Exactly. Um, so he's 
uh, omitting certain facts and figures. So we want to put pressure on him, and we want the public also to realise that we didn't do this lightly. Everyone is loath to go on strike. As firefighters, our job is to help, to help the public, and we really want the public to see that this is not what it is, the government's. As a member of the public myself, I've always been firmly backing firefighters in everything in lieu of what's been going on. Not just like today, not just the last couple of years. Like, you know, it's got quite a history in terms of in terms of the union yeah. the union frontline thing. It's it's quite it's quite quite a history there and yeah. but it's a heritage that we need to keep alive. It is. Because it is vital. It's people's quality of life. It's people's lifestyles. People's as soon as infrastructure, people see it imploding around them. That is when people lose hope. That's right. And that's not what we and need. I think to of, you're exactly right. And I think a couple of what you're saying is also sort of to to more off. There's also the threat of privatisation of the fire service, and that's a real threat. There's a number of brigades who've already forged links with private companies. Uh, there will be some private companies acting as an honest strike rate capacity to go on this strike. Um, but that is, that is a real concern for us. And part of the why we're also is one of the reasons we believe they're making our, potentially making our scheme unworkable, is so the pension scheme will collapse to open the doors to privatisation. So that, again, is a, is a big a, danger for us all. Danger for, for everybody, yeah. I mean, it throws the five again back to the days when it was originally made, where we didn't have a plaque on your door. You didn't get your fire put out. You know, everything goes full circle, and it kind of looks like that's what's happening. And it's, you know, something we've got to fight. Have you got any uh, any final things to say before we go on on this? Um, just that uh, um, we desperately want this to be sorted out. We want Brandon Lewis to sit up and listen to us, and we want the Conservative government to be responsible and. Um, we, didn't, we weren't the cause of this depression that we're going through now, this economic uh, event. We didn't create the hardships, and we think the people who did would now get the, the bankers who are now receiving their bonuses again, and it's business as usual. It should be them who are being um, hit, and not us. And uh, I just want to see a, a responsible government doing what they should be. Thank you. I think we're all inclined to feel the same way. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you for turning up. Uh, it's like, what... What is your uh, what's your feelings on this current situation? Well, I think that the government is treating firefighters with an amount of, of insulting behaviour. Essentially, I think that we should be respecting the fantastic work that firefighters do. They put their lives on the line for us every single day of the week, and literally. And, uh, and the government is now expecting them to work longer, to put more money into their pension schemes, and that's unworkable. It's unfair. But it's also unsafe, unsafe for the firefighters and unsafe for the general public too. I mean, we can hear the support from people passing by, you know, people who are blowing their horns. We're, we're all aware of how vital this is as part Absolutely. of our infrastructure Absolutely. and how much they deserve the credit for it as well. Exactly, and the idea that, you know, this, this uh, austerity problem, this deficit that was caused, certainly not by people like firefighters. Engineered. Exactly, it's been done by the, by the, by the bankers who got off scot free essentially, and meanwhile, public sector workers are being forced to pick up the pieces, and that's just deeply unfair. And that's why I wanted to express my solidarity and also do everything I can in Parliament to support them. Absolutely, yeah. So, uh, what particular problems can you see in the not too distant future have been incurred by these further cuts and people becoming and feeling more depreciated by these things? Well, I think the worst case scenario is that there are actually you know, accidents that, that, that people are harmed and, and got a bit killed because they weren't fit enough to be doing the job that they've been forced to do, in a sense. Um, so that's the worst case scenario, but below that, we've got a whole range of people who are going to be affected financially. I think the way in which, um, you, you know, public sector work ought to be held in, in, in high esteem, but more and more it's being run down, and I think that means that probably people will think twice so for joining such a vital service, and if we didn't have it, I don't know many government ministers who would be happy to uh, run into a burning building for £28,000 a year. Yeah, yeah, minus the seven for the pension that they might not potentially get. Exactly. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a sad situation. Thank you very much for your time, Robert. <laughs>